Well, this is The Breakfast in Plus TV Africa. Thanks for joining us. We uh, look quickly uh, take a look at our second conversation where we're looking at the alleged wrongful relocation of oil fields. And we have an expert that joins the conversation. But however, a bit of a background to this. Trouble over the oil field started on April the 6th, 2020, when the regulatory agency, Department of Petroleum Resources, revoked the operating license of Basel Oil Company over the alleged lack of assets turnaround for the nation. Now, senators directed the Nigerian Upstream Petroleum Regulatory Commission to show proof of the presidential directive for revocation and relocation of the Atala Marginal Oil Field, uh, OML 46, owned by the Biasa State Government, uh, which was transferred to the Hull King Exploration and Production Company Limited. Well, the directive followed by the Senate uh, was given, but however, you have a trio of the BOCL, Hadi Oil Nigerian Limited and Century Exploration and Production Limited kicking against the renovation and revocation or relocation on the ground that the original operators of the oil field exploration and production have been made and loyalties were paid into the accounts of the federal government. As, the time, as at the time, uh, the fuel was purportedly revoked and joint venture partners had an outstanding 20,700 barrels of crude uh, on the ground we have a guest joining the conversation. It's almost over at the time we had the uh, Basel State government taking, you know, speaking out and being very vocal about this, saying, hey, this belongs to the Basel State government. But you also have the Senate of recent time showing her consent in this made statement. But what does this mean at the end of the day for Basel State? We have Ola Bode Shomi, who is an oil and ex gas expert, joining us this morning on the conversation. Thank you for joining us, Olabode. Show me. Yeah, good morning, madam. It's a pleasure to be with you. All right, then. Thank you uh, once again. Uh, quickly, what do you make of all of this? I mean, this is a conversation that's been going on for a long time. We're in 2022, but something that started way back from 2020. I, I think that's how was way before 2020. So we, we can just go to the origins of when the um, licenses were revoked. I mean, were given by the federal government. There were incidents, there were activities that led to the revocation in the first place. So when the joint venture was given, there were three partners, Century, Biasa State Government, uh, that there was a lot of fights and disagreements among them to the extent that nothing was being done. The DPR then wrote them a warning letter saying that if they did not develop the fields, that their licenses would be revoked. But still, they were not able to harmonize. The three parties were not able to harmonize and get work going. In fact, in point of fact, there is a record where Century wrote a letter to the DPR then asking them for the licenses to be revoked. So it was really no surprise per se when the licenses were revoked. So the first of all, they, 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 they had no activity on the field, primarily because they, they were having issues. So while we understand that they paid royalties and all that, but it's also important that we allow the law to work. It's just um, unfortunate for the new people hacking who have taken, who have been allocated the field, that they are inheriting a seabed of problems. Primarily because one of the people that was given the licenses is a state government. So the issue here is about law and order, and the fact that the commission, which has the powers to do this thing, must be allowed to do its work. I mean, that's the essence of the Petroleum Industry Act, anyway. At any rate they made a representation to the commission and the commission set up a committee headed by one of his commissioners to investigate the whole issue. And they took a few months, they took um, evidences from everybody, they listened to them and they also came up with the fact that the old DPR, as it was, was in the right to revocate those licenses. 
And subsequently, I think it went somewhere else. Now, what they have done is go to an arbiter. Because what the Senate, the responsibility the Senate has in this case is to just check whether the DPR acted in good faith and with respect to existing laws, which I believe the Senate will do. But in the process, they have brought a lot of things into um, the media. You know, sometimes you take your fight to the media to ensure that you get even better hearing. So it is the responsibility of everyone to hear from all parties, which in, for which I'm not a party to anyone anyway at this moment. But you may want to speak to the NUPRT, who have already listened to all the parties, adjudge in the case, and issued a letter to all parties on the results of the arbitration that they did. You may also want to speak to the new people who were allocated the licenses, and then you may have, um, you may have a different view on the whole thing. But the truth be told is that we as Nigerians need to learn to be comfortable with law and order. We cannot just expect uh, that every time, because we have some power and we have some influence, we can break laws, we can alter circumstances and allow things to go away. It cannot, we cannot, I mean, that's how we got into commotion in the first place. The PIA is clear in terms of who has what authority. And there is, it is also clear everywhere in the world, if you are given a license and you do not use it, and there are extant laws within those licenses that says it can be revoked, then you have the challenges of it being revoked, particularly because there was a warning letter from the DPR then that there was no development and they stood the risk of being revoked. But more importantly, because one of the parties had written to the DPR asking that the licenses be revoked because of irreconcilable differences. So, I mean, these are facts of the matter that can be verified. Irreconcilable right. differences or, you know, uh, turn around at the end of the day to the nation? Well, I'm not century, so I cannot speak to I'm... their intent. Yeah, but I can speak to the fact that they wrote a letter. I mean, and that's public and that can be verified and that evidence of that can be gotten. So it's not my own place to say what the issues are. You know, the subjective things are not my place. What we do is just to analyze the facts of the matter. So the facts of the matter is what I've spoken to. The elections were given to Biasa government, Century, I mean, and the three parties were not able to effectively develop the field. The second fact of the matter was that there was a warning from the DPR that their licenses could be revoked. But still, they were not able to harmonize and get work going. And at the point in time, one of the parties wrote to DPR asking that the licenses be revoked. And along the line, probably after the expiration of the term, that I don't know for certain, but I, I guess it would be that way, the licenses were revoked. Those are the facts that I know of the matter. I would like you to talk about the role of uh, President Mahmoud Buhari in all of this. Uh, also, the role of the Senate Committee on Ethics, Privileges and Public Petitions, because they've asked uh, the, uh, the, uh, the new agency that emerged from the uh, ashes of the DPR, the Assembly Upstream Regulatory Commission, to, uh, to produce um, the uh, written directive from the president on the allocation of uh, the oil field to Halkin ENP. Um, so what do you say to this? The role of the president and the role of the uh, Senate committee in well, all of this? If, if you recall, uh, one of the things that was in the public there uh, a few months ago was the issue about the, the, the sale of automobiles on Shosh and and the fact that there was a reservation by a PRC, and then there was an announcement from the presidency, and the PRC took a stand. And what we basically state, I mean, what the, the, the trust of the message from the people is that a regulator must be allowed to do it. So, NUPRC is the regulator for all street, just like you have CPN, regulator for the banks. Just like you have NDT, regulator for the broadcast industry. 
Okay, uh, yes. Olamide Show, Shobi, you, you've talked about the law. Sorry to interrupt you, uh, sir. Uh, you've talked about the law, but um, can we spare a thought? Would you, would you think we should spare a thought for these bodies, the, these companies, BOCL on one side, uh, or BOCL, Hardy Oil uh, Nigeria Limited, and then Century Exploration and Production Limited? Because they're, they're saying that this revocation is unfair to them on the grounds that, you know, um, as the original operators of the field, uh, they, they had made exploration and production, you know, royalties. They had paid royalties. They had gone ahead to make exploration. They've also invested in production. So if you uh, invest in exploration, it's not small money. You invest in production, it's more, not small money. You're paying royalties to communities through uh, the federal government into the account of the federation. It's not a small money. At the time that the license had been revoked, you know, and that they have an outstanding 207, so 20,700 barrels uh, of uh, crude oil on the site. So these things have already been ongoing. Okay, I, I think um, you, you spoke about the law, and then on the other side, we have to look at the moral issues. On the moral issues, it will be unfair, but on the basis of the law, the law is the law. So, and I'll give you this example. In 2010, my mom went to the U.S. And as you can expect, with uh, some of our citizens, she had um, some pomo. That's um, she had a few uh, vegetables and all that. And the customer of this in New York at JFK said he's actually managing Nigerian, so he was an American. And that he understands everything. And let to him, particularly because of his testament, he would have allowed that to go. But he said, but the law is the law. And on the basis of that, all that she spent a lot of time unpacking had to be seized. Because they have not followed the procedure for, for entry into the United States. There is something about law and order. It is a fundamental, it is a, it's an economic fundamentals because if you check the list of economic fundamentals, law and order is one of them. When you get a license and you have paid for your license, that does not mean you own it 100%. And I'll give you an example of a broadcast license. There are actions you can take when you have a broadcast license that can make your license to be revoked. The same thing with the backing license. Irrespective of whatever um, commitment and investment you must have made. Now, under the same law that granted the, um, the oil license, there are conditions where the license can be revoked. And one of it is non-investment and non-actions on the field. But more importantly, the fact that they were actually warned about an impending revocation. So these are facts. Okay, so quickly, so yes. when we talk long, hmm. yes. Let, let's bring this down because I want to understand if you would describe the action of the executive arm of government where the president on the strength of protest, uh, President Mohammed Buhari at the time in October, directed the immediate reinstatement of the revoked license 
on a discretional basis. I mean, we have seen that the Biasa state government has said, we're going to be committed to ensuring that, hey, uh, if it's a turnaround and whatever you have, uh, we're going to improve this if that's the issue. Would you say that the uh, declaration or the act or the involvement of the executive arm of government led by the president is a meddlesome interloper? First of all, so we're going into the details of law and order now. So I think the lawyer can react on that. And I, I'm being fair, I'm trying to to everyone. So I don't want to speak beyond what is my own expertise. What the federal government does will be right if it is consistent with the law that is in existence, and that is the PIA. But I'm only speaking, I'm a technical expert, and I'm, I'm, I'm aware of some of the issues in this case. That is the basis for which I'm speaking. If the president acts in a manner that is consistent no, it can be taken and that is reversed. So the issue here, the point I to make is a point of principle. It has nothing to do with any of the stakeholders. And the point is this, that we have to follow what the law says. The, where there is inconsistencies or debate about the law in a democracy, the person that corrects it is the court. It is not the president. So if there are sincere and genuine grounds by any of the parties, the real place to go is the court, is not to go to a higher authority because you cannot appropriate and reprobate. So the government, if the DPR did not, so yeah, um, the Bielsa government can have a case is if, like they are alleging, that the circumstances and the procedures for the revocation of the license was wrong or illegal, then they can have a case. But they cannot have a case by saying that simply because they have invested so much money that the license cannot be revoked. That is not tenable within law. All right. So we, we, we have to. They we have to. need to actually check. Yes, please. Yes, yes. Your, your final sentence, please. Okay, so that is not tenable within law. So, to my mind, the, since the NUPRC, which is the regulator, has looked into the case and found in favor of the old DPR, so what they can do now is take the NUPRC and those who currently have um, the license to court and state their case before the court. All right. Let the court determine. You see what things we need okay. to We have to go now. Let me talk to the law. Olabode, we have to go. I'm sure we can have this conversation some other time. But for me, uh, it leaves the question of what it could be now that the Senate is saying, hey, we're frowning and they're asking that there be a proof, you know, where that license was asked to uh, be directed. What becomes, you know, of the situation? A conversation for another time. Thank you so much. Ola Bode Shomi, oil and gas expert. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. Well, that's it uh, this morning on the show. I mean, it's, it's, it's quite interesting. I really don't know. It feels like we get back to the times where we dig some of these issues, you know, from way back. But we've been speaking with an expert, and he shared his thoughts on all of that. But let's see how all of these things pan out. And that's the size of our conversation this morning on The Breakfast. If you missed out on any part of it, it would be okay to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And do subscribe to our YouTube channel, who's at Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. My name is Messi Boko. Have a great morning. And my name is Kofi Bartels. We'll return tomorrow. Good morning.